Chapter 3 Sora awakens in an unknowable place. It is dark and smells like crusty vomit. Sora realizes that he's somehow wound up in a dirty ass alleyway. He decides not to stick around here lest he catch rabies from one of the trash vermin he sees scuttling about. Sora exits the alley and finds himself in the middle of a bustling little village. A feeling of musical charmment rises in the air. The sight of a large crowd dressed in Victorian style clothing and the sound of rambunctious chit chat sets the mood quite nicely. Sora has never seen anything like this and wonders what kind of place he has managed to end up in. Then, as if on cue, Sora sees a giant neon sign hanging up on the rooftops. It reads, Welcome one, and welcome all, to the great and fabulous Transverse Town. It is a quaint and marvelous place indeed, Sora is enchanted by the town's charming sights and attractions. Clothing stores, shopping centers, and ye olde booteries stretch as far as the eye can see. The windows of bakeries are stocked full with wide variety of delicious foodstuffs. Sora is overjoyed with the thought of finally being able to eat a diet that does not consist solely of coconuts and seagull eggs. But just as Sora is beginning to adjust to his surroundings and enjoy himself, a tragedy strikes. Horrible monstrosities come oozing out from the cracks in the pavement and from the shadows of doubt. Sora finds himself face to face with the very same creatures he encountered back on the island. No doubt survivors of Sora's onslaught come to seek revenge for their fallen comrades. Sora meets them in a decisive clash. Wham! Bam! Pow! One by one he slices the monsters to pieces. But just as soon as one monster is killed, Another one is quick to rise up and take its place. The beasts are felled in droves, but they just keep coming, one after the other. Sora is prepared to keep fighting until the end of time if he has to, but before that can happen, the battle is interrupted by a mysterious figure who jumps down from the rooftops and takes Sora by the arm, whisking him away into one of the nearby buildings. Sora is normally pretty suspicious of creepy people that try to kidnap him, but he can sense that this is not an enemy, but rather a mysterious, spooky-looking ally. The man is called Lion Face the Squall, and he is the mayor of Transverse Town. Lion Face tells us that, as you may have already guessed, Sora is not from this world. His home planet, like many others before it, were consumed by dark forces. These creatures are known as the Heartless, and they're a real nasty bunch. The Heartless's only desire is to eat worlds, and people too sometimes. At this rate, if nothing is done, the entire universe will be nothing but an all-you-can-eat buffet. And not the good kind either, it's the kind where they always forget to restock the egg rolls, and that one guy takes all the crab legs and then doesn't even finish them. But fret not, my friends, for the Heartless have a great weakness, a great and terrible Weakness indeed. It is the Keyblade. 
That's right, the very same Keyblade that Sora wields in his own two hands. It is a magical weapon, destined to smite all that is evil and unlock life's many treasure chests. But just, but only those with a very powerful heart can ever wield the Keyblade. So Lion Face figures that Sora must be something real special. Then, as Lion Face is about to drop some more important lore knowledge, they are both interrupted by a loud crash. A shadowy beast bursts through the window. Golly gee, the Heartless have managed to breach the safe house. A wave of evil bodies comes careening into the building, forcing Sora and Lionface to separate from each other. Sora forces his way out into the plaza outside, but oh no! Now he is surrounded on all sides. Things are looking bleak, but ho ho ho, ladies and gentlemen, this is just what Sora was hoping for. By enacting a powerful spin move, Sora manages to defeat every single enemy all at once. All right, says Sora. Which one of you pansies is next? Then, as if to answer his question, Sora's ears are met with the heavy sound of a clank, clank, clanking. From around the corner steps a giant walking suit of power armor. Sora grips his keyblade in anticipation as the giant monstrosity slowly closes in on him. But before the two of them can even exchange blows, the heavens suddenly split open and release a barrage of lightning, frying the armored monstrosity to a crisp. A pair of enigmatic figures step into view. A portly duck dressed in wizard's garb and his lanky canine companion. The two of them stare intently at Sora as if he were the object of the most intense match of Where's Waldo that the world has ever known. Look goofy, the duck says to his friend. It's that Keyblade kid that we've been looking for. What's this now? How do these two shady characters know about Sora and his key? Could they be a couple of dastardly assassins? Are they here to suck out Sora's soul and leave his body for the buzzards? But no. Sora somehow knows that these two men have not come seeking a fight. They are kind-hearted souls, and powerful ones at that. The two of them immediately bow before Sora, showering him with the greatest of praises and bestowing many kisses upon his sublime feet. This is a sight that Sh Sora could surely get used to.